Hello. Uh, today what I want to talk about is financial statements and how they flow together, their interconnection and flow. So I'm going to start out with just some conceptual drawings here and then I'll take it to some uh, to a spreadsheet with some sample financial statements and we'll look at the numbers in a little more detail and how they are interconnected and flow. So first there's three types of financial statements, right? A balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. And we're going to talk about each one in turn and how they are interconnected and what they what they report. So the first thing we have is a balance sheet, right? And the, what's on a balance sheet is, uh, think for a second, what is on a balance sheet? The general categories. And if you know, that's good. If you don't, hopefully this will help you to remember. So on a balance sheet, you have, there are, there are three things. On the left-hand side are the assets. And on the right-hand side of the balance sheet, there are two different segments, and they're called the liabilities and the equity. And together, this actually forms the accounting equation. It's called the accounting equation. And that the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity. So now that we've got that together, we can start looking at this. Uh, the way a balance sheet is done, and the BS is for a balance sheet, um, think of a balance sheet as a, just a picture in time of uh, these three elements. And basically the way it's set up is these two elements on this side, the liabilities and equity, fund that's how you fund the, that's how you purchase the assets. That's how the assets are funded. Liabilities are debt, uh, loans, bonds, things like that. Equity is money that you put in. Um, you can think of, and then the assets are the things you buy to, in a business to make the, the business function, make money. They're income producing assets for the most part. So when you think about this, uh, think about a balance sheet like being a homeowner and then you'll never forget these things and how they interact and all when you own a home you own the home and you usually have a mortgage on the home and then you have some homeowner's equity right that that those three things uh map perfectly onto these three things so the asset is the home and the way that you price the asset the home is by appraisal right so you have an appraisal of the home when you sell a home or you go to refinance your mortgage or get a mortgage and the appraisal is done they look at comp an appraiser comes in and looks at comparable sales in the neighborhood that are recent and then adjusts your house uh, relative to those sales say there was a sale and and it had the house had an extra bathroom or an extra bedroom or a little more square footage they'd adjust that right to get the value of your home so that market value is the asset value and then you have a Liability and the liability in this case is the mortgage. That's the loan. That's how much you owe. So say if the house is worth $150,000 and you have a mortgage for $100,000, then how much homeowner's equity, right? It's equity. How much equity do you have? Well, if this is 150 and this is 100, then you have $50,000 of equity. Same, you can say, think the same way for the balance sheet of a business. All businesses function in that same way. You have the assets, you have the liabilities, and they're broken down into current liabilities and long-term liabilities, like the things you have to pay right now, like the electric bill and salaries. Those are all current liabilities. And then you have the long-term liabilities, like some, some debt or bonds or loan that you have uh, as a company. And then what's left over is the equity. This is what the stockholders own. So this is how a uh, company is set up. You have these, these uh, elements of the balance sheet financial statement. And you usually have one of these at the beginning of the year, right? So I'm just going to put that up here. B-O-Y. 
And that's at the beginning of the year for the balance sheet. Then you go through the year, right? And that, uh, as you go through the year, um, you report that stuff on what's called an income statement. The S's don't come out so good on this, huh? <laughs> uh, income statement. And the income statement is just like when, just how you operate your own life. You get revenues, right? You get your salary and from your job, and then you pay your expenses, and hopefully you have something left over at the end of the end of the month. And same thing with a business, right? The business has its revenues, and that usually comes from sales, right? And then you subtract the expenses, and that's salaries and electricity bill and you know utilities, phone, whatever, all those kind of things, rent, all those things are the expenses. And then at the bottom, what they call the bottom line, right? You always hear that. Well, the bottom line is this. The bottom line is net income. And sometimes that's called profits or earnings. But in this case, we're, they're all synonymous, but we're going to just call it net income. So it's revenues minus expenses equals net income, right? So, you, so this is what you have as, a, uh, as an income statement. And that goes on through the year. And then at the end of the year, you're going to do another balance sheet, right? And that, this balance sheet is going to be the same as the other one. It's going to have assets, liabilities, and equity. And in this case, you're going to actually have the, the additional income that you made will somehow end up on this balance sheet and be reported on here, right? So the way that we do that is we have this other statement that reconciles this net income with actual cash. And that statement is called the cash flow statement, right? And that, we'll just put that name right over here. And the way the cash flow statement works, it's very simple. It's, it's really, it can get confusing for people, but it's not that confusing. You have your net, you start with the net income. That's the top number in the, uh, in the, uh, cash flow statement. And then what we're doing is we're making, we're subtracting and adding back things that were non-cash uh, expenses and revenues. So in accounting, we do, uh, the accounting that we use is called accrual accounting. And accrual is different from cash accounting in that it doesn't matter when the cash comes in or goes out per se, it's when the event happens. Like if you make a sale, but they're not going to pay for 60 days, well then, but you give them the goods, then you mark that revenue is coming in at the time that you give them the goods, at the time of that transaction. And then that revenue, because you haven't got the cash yet, becomes an account receivable. If you have a bill that you acknowledge you have to pay, say the electric bill comes and you, you put that into your accounting system, but you're not going to cut checks and send them their money for the, till the end of the month or next month or whatever, that becomes an account payable. You know it's got to be paid, but the cash hasn't come out yet. And so that's how we try to match up the, uh, the revenue with the expense at the time of the event. And that's accrual accounting. It makes it much more accurate for for someone to look at the books and see what the heck's going on, then, then cash coming in and out. But we have to reconcile then these non-cash accounts for the cash balance so we know how much we have in our bank account and make sure it matches up with our financial statements. So there's three parts to the, to the cash flow statement. You start with the net income, and then the first part is called operations, and that's where we do this kind of stuff. We put in uh, plus or minus accounts payable and accounts receivable, you know, add back and or subtract depending on the changes. Uh, depreciation. Depreciation is an expense, right? But it's an expense that is non-cash because we bought some asset, put it on our on our balance sheet here, didn't report it in expenses, and then take a piece of that, say, every five years or 10 years or three years, depending on what the lifetime of the of that asset is so that we can more accurately report the usage of of that asset in each year that we're using it but in the years as we use it it's a non-cash expense and so we we add that back or 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 if we sold an asset you know we do the salvage value here and that'd be an add back and that's called the investment part and then we have the third part the financing part and that's if say if you sell some stock 
or the proceeds from a loan come in or something, you know, debt you, you took on a loan, that or you paid back a loan, you'd add and subtract the financing numbers. And when you do those three different categories from the net income number, you sort of uh, adjust for all the non-cash events that are reported here in revenues and expenses. And then down here, you come up with the cash number. That cash number, cash is the first the first thing that's on the, uh, the balance sheet because it's the most liquid, it's the top thing. So what you do is take this cash number from the cash that you received, that, that you made during this, this year, this period, and that number gets added to the previous cash number and you have a new cash number. Then the net income number here, uh, that gets plowed into equity, right? And that's, that, that is called retained earnings. And that's basically how much money, new money that the company earned, and it's going to be added to the equity from before as retained earnings. And so those two numbers kind of match each other. And then the other, the, the difference between them is made up in these accounts payable and accounts receivable and depreciation, the other numbers that show up on here. So that when we get to this point, these two numbers have to add up. The assets on this side have to equal the liabilities and equity. So this side of the balance sheet has to equal this side of the balance sheet. So that would be the end of the year balance sheet then, right? And this shows how the financial statements, how the money flows through from one balance sheet through the income statement and gets reconciled in the cash flow statement. And then those numbers come into the new balance sheet plus the changes in the other accrual accounts like accounts receivable, accounts payable, depreciation, you know, taken off of the asset, those kind of things. And so that's how that that is the interconnection and flow of financial statements. So thanks very much. Now I'll move over into we'll look at this again. We'll take a look at this in some sample uh, spread a sample spreadsheet with a bunch of the different financial statements so we can look at some numbers and see how these interconnections work. But first I wanted to sort of just sketch it out and explain it for you.